I'm telling you, parents, you've heard this from other people. Life goes by quickly. Yeah. Don't sell your kids short. Give them the vitamin E, train them up. You know, the Bible says in the way he should go. That doesn't mean, by the way, it doesn't mean the way you think he should go. Most parents think, no, that's the way God would have your kid go. What I'm telling you is all five of your kids, just like the five Lehman kids, are all very different. Mm. Mm. And they love each other and they're close and they're close to us. Dr. Kevin Lehman is with us. Now, your book, you know, kids, your why your kids behave and what to do about it. I want to know, is there an adult book coming out soon? I want to know why they have misbehave and what to do about it. That's an interesting point because I got news for you. The little boy or little girl you once were, guess what? In all probability, you, you still are. Still Those the same are one. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. 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 That you learned as a little kid, carry on to adulthood. And I think that's what makes the whole idea of why kids misbehave and what to do about it intriguing. Because quite frankly, us parents teach the kids to misbehave. So maybe you just said it. I was about to ask you. (laughs) So why do kids misbehave? Well, three basic reasons. Most kids are attention getters. Okay. And so most kids, when they misbehave, and it starts early, you know, when kids are little and they're in a swimming pool, mommy, watch me, mommy, watch me. Mom puts her head down for three seconds. No, mommy, watch me. So attention getting is number one. Uh, Powerful behavior that says, I want to dominate you, I'm an authority over you, uh, is the next progression from attention getting to power. And this kid never read St. Paul's words in the book of Ephesians that says, children, obey your parents. It's the right thing to do because God has placed them in authority (laughs) over you. They have little regard for that. So uh, uh, warning for all parents, hey, parents, you represent Almighty God in your home. Mm. You need to be a good parent and you need to be able to give kids vitamin N, which is no <laughs> vitamin E, which is encouragement. And your yes has to be yes. Your no has to be no. But quite frankly, we've got kids short in a yardstick. They're in full control of families today. That is true. <laughs> I've experienced <Yes>. that. <laughs> that is true. <laughs> and so and on top of that, if, if there's any theologians listening, here's the question of the day. Is God an authoritarian? No, but he is a supreme what? Supreme authority. In fact, his mm-hmm. scripture says, every knee shall bow. So he's not a man be pamby God, but uh, most of us, in fact, most of us in the studio and me here in New York State, where I am right now, we all grew up in authoritarian homes. We had parents that said, hey, as long as you live under this roof, you're going to do what I tell you to do. Hey, you want mm-hmm. something to cry about? I'll give you something to cry about. So what I'm saying is the key to being a good parent is certainly not being permissive. And we have a ton of parents like that today. And it certainly is an authoritarian because either extremes breeds rebellion in your child's life, parents. You got to understand this. And mm. so that point really satisfies the point that, yes, God is the ultimate authority. And that's that bridge between authoritarianism and uh and permissiveness Mm. so i have to ask i i mean i don't imagine that misbehavior is something that our kids just automatically magically one day become angels and so you made this statement envision what kind of adult you want your children to be what does that mean Is, is that the key to ending misbehavior it is in a way sally because Mm. um steve covey once said I've quoted him so many times. He says, start with the end in mind. So if you want a responsible child parent, give them responsibility. That's why I'm a firm believer in giving a kid a little allowance at about age six. Let them understand what money's all about. Let them learn to budget their own little money. And it, it really, I think it lends itself to responsibility. But believing in your kids. In fact, I'll ask mm-hmm. both of you this personal question. Uh-oh. How many people had your back, Mike, and your back, Sally, when you were a kid? Who believed in you anyway? How many people? How many mm. fingers go up? Mm. That's the mm. interesting. <laughs> I don't know. I have to think about that. My mom and dad. I think my mom. Yeah, I think my dad did. I don't know. I, I was unsure about him at times. 
<laughs> How about you, Misty? Oh, Mike, the, um, the average is somewhere between one and two. Yeah. Okay. You, you don't run into people that said, oh, I got 12 people who had my back at all. But that quality of being a parent, to be able to extend love to your kids and discipline them, because the Bible teaches us that if you love your child, you'll what? You'll discipline your child. Mm -hmm. And, you know, Sally has been around me for years. And she probably knows every word I'm going to tell you, but there's times you pull the rug out and let the little buzzard tumble. And you have to understand, and this comes from my book, uh, Have a New Kid by Friday, an unhappy child is a healthy child. What? <laughs> <laughs> Say that again. Let those little suckers be uh, miserable. They deserve to be miserable when they lied, they stole something, they dissed you, they picked on their little brother or sister. So, mm -hmm. you know, uh, again, tongue in cheek, we've seen the enemy and they are small and they're unionized. <laughs> and they're moving forward into our home. And we let the Trojan horse right in our home and the kids take over. You tell me if I'm wrong. I mean, uh, we have schools in uh, Arizona, Lehman Academy of Excellence, and we have one in Colorado and another one going up soon up there. And we put authority in the classroom teacher's hand. What a difference it makes. There's hundreds of people trying to get our schools right now because we do that. But discipline and authority gives kids a sense of well-being. And that's what all you young mommies need to understand this old man's trying to tell you. Don't be so hung up about uh, getting your kid on every uh digital device one can find it's all about relationships and i know that's one thing you guys preach all the time it's all about relationships mm -hmm. mm. so you uh there are three stages of misbehavior that you talk about i think you went over one the attention getting let's go over all three well here's your attention getter i hope you can hear this we'll just say we're in a classroom now here's the attention getter you hear that noise yeah uh -huh. mm -hmm. yeah and you say, Thomas, stop that. Thomas stops that for a second. Two minutes later. Back. Oh. See, these kids can make you pay attention. Oh. I, again, I, as a kid, I was a great attention getter. I had a sister who was perfect. I had a brother who was perfect. I was the youngest child in the family. Well, I'm a shrink by trade. And I've shrunk myself years ago. I couldn't <laughs> compete with those starlets. So I became the class clown the guy that got in trouble, never, never really bad, bad trouble. Although I did get thrown out of college and Cub Scouts in fourth grade. But other than that, I was a great <laughs> kicked, kicked out of Cub Scouts. Scouts. Wow. That was uh, wow. Yeah. That's you know? yeah. How, how can you get Cub? I did, believe me. So anyway, <gasps> that attention getter, Misty, to answer your question, he says to himself, I only count in life when people notice me. Mm. Um, the next step down, that powerful child, he says, I only count in life when I dominate, when I control. Mm. Now, listen, for all you ladies that are raising sons, listen to me now. You don't let that guy get away with anything. Why? Because he represents, you represent womanhood to him across the board. Mm. And so he has to learn to respect women. Mm. That's good. And men are getting better at it, but we still got a long way to go in my biased opinion. And daddy can play a big role in that, Kevin. I remember a day that Raj sat our son down, way down. And uh, <laughs> Brad had said something smart alecky to me and Raj had had enough. And he just said him straight about how he would treat his mom and women and how he wouldn't. And that was a game changer that day. And yeah, so I appreciate what you're saying right there about teaching these boys young about respecting the women in their lives. Thank you. Yeah. And back to your question, and Misty, uh, sometimes I wander off track, so help me. Uh, that third level of misbehavior is the kid that is revengeful. Mm. And his mantra in life is, I only hurt, I only count in life when I hurt other people. Mm. Oh. And our, our prisons, by the way, are mm. full of those people. Wow. It goes back to my earlier point, the little boy or little girl, what, guess what? You still are. Because most of us don't outgrow that tendency. In fact, <laughs> I was on a show this week, a network, uh, a network show here in New York. And 
I made the point. I'm trying to think it was not. Oh, wait till you get old now. I had that <laughs> thought. Just, it went right in one ear and out the other. <laughs> oh, gosh. I'll think of it. Go ahead. Sorry. <laughs> I just, you know, <laughs> senior moment, young people who are laughing. You'll get <laughs> Hey, uh, I have ADD off the chart, so I'm right there with you. I don't think it has anything to do with age. As Here's far as my I favorite line. Siri, what day is it today? <laughs> <laughs> That's hilarious. Hey, you talk and month. And month. Yeah. yeah. You yeah. you talk about uh, purposive behavior. I've never heard the word purposive before. Uh, why do we need to consider it when our kids are misbehaving? What, what is it anyway? Well, Purpose of behavior is actually a psychological term that says in that child's mind who's misbehaving, his behavior serves a purpose. He's sending you the message that I'm the boss here. That's your, your powerful child. Your attention getter is saying, I'm the only one that deserves attention. He'll go way out of his way to get attention. And the eventual kid is saying, I got you. He's got to, and by the way, to, to most of your parents who are listening right now, the huge majority, 99% of you, trust me, do not have a revengeful child. Mm. At best, you have a powerful child. But nevertheless, you learn to take the sails out of that kid's win because when he comes after you and he whines about life and things aren't fair and, and you just learn to look at him, you know, and say, honey, I'm sure you can handle it. And by the way, I should tell you this. Uh, Sally knows this, but it might be new information for you, Misty, especially. But um, men are very trainable. <laughs> There's a lot of things that work with kids that also work with husbands. I always tell ladies this. I ask them a question. Is your husband capable of saying something really stupid, really dumb? <laughs> Capable? You should see the hands, the hands fly up in the air. Yes, yes, yes. I said, next time he says something really stupid, just look at him and say, wow, wow. Fascinating. <laughs> just say that. Just smile. The same thing with what kids. Are we, what are we so here's what happens right in there. our homes today. A kid gets mad and angry because you didn't give him whatever he wanted. He runs to his room. He slams the door and the whole house shakes. Your traditional authoritarian parent says, hey, don't you be slamming the door in this house, young lady. Now, the parent that I help create says, excuse me, honey, uh, I'm not sure what that slam door meant. Does that mean you're sick of loading in this four bedroom home with premium Wi-Fi? <laughs> <laughs> help me understand. If you get into a power struggle, especially once they get the hormone group, which starts about age nine these days, uh, you're going to lose parent in a power struggle. You have more to lose mm -hmm. than they do. Yes, you're, people are looking at your kid in the supermarket, but trust me, they're looking a, a step further at you and saying, what kind of a parent are you to have a kid like that? Mm. Mm. Wow. Yeah, that's huge. <laughs> no um, kidding. So as I'm taking all of this in, you know, you say that punishment never works. So reality discipline does, but what, what is reality discipline, Dr. Lehman? Well, it comes along with this thought. Let the reality of the situation become the teacher to the child. Mm. And so when a kid has overspent his allowance, and now he's begging for money because he's got to have this or that, you say, honey, use mm. your allowance. Mom, I don't have any money left. Well, honey, payday Saturday. Mm -hmm. Teach that kid to, to wait. That's what we do. I don't know about you, but I've spent a lot of weeks in my life waiting for that next paycheck. Yeah. And so when we talk about training up a child, think about that for a second. Most of us don't train up children. Most of us train down children. Hmm. You know, a young mom going into a store and Safeway, she's got two kids with her. She has a little talk. She's a veteran mother by now. And it goes like this. All right, listen up. No running around, no fooling around. Don't ask for any candy because the answer is no. <laughs> I got to get a few things. Your dad's going to be home in a few minutes. I got to get dinner going. And, and before long, there they are at the checkout counter with M&Ms, plain and peanut. Uh -huh. <laughs> and you're about to clean their clock and you look up in the next aisle and there's your pastor and his wife. Oh, hi. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, see you Sunday. Uh, and then you say to your kid, all right, but then there's no more candy for life. Do you understand me? No more candy for your entire life. So 
parents say stupid things to kids like that and then wonder why kids don't pay attention to the words we say. Mm. Oh, yeah, that's powerful. You know, I, I think that none of us would go crying to our boss to say, I really want to buy this or that. And uh, could you give me an advance on my... Yeah. 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 <laughs> I just don't Let's see that happening. Example. Let's give an example for some of those old parents that have 17-year-olds. Mm. This is a kid that was supposed to clean the garage on Saturday. He laid around, played video games, took a nap. And now at 5.30 at night, he helped himself to a quick dinner, a teenage dinner, which would be a peach or an apple. And he comes up to you, Dad, and he says, Dad, come on, I, I need the keys. I got to go. He said, honey, what do you mean go? You're not going anywhere. Dad, I'm going to go over to Jake's house. We're going to shoot some hoops. Honey, you were supposed to clean the garage today. and You didn't touch it. And you laid around all day. So you're not going anywhere. Now, you're going to have a meltdown. You're going to mm. have a powerful kid on your hand who's very angry because you're so unreasonable. But I'm telling you, parents, stick to your guns without shooting yourself in the foot, okay? Your no is no. And when you start behaving like that, and this goes back to Sally's wonderful question about what is reality discipline. And the principal remembers, let the situation become the teacher to the child. So the situation is what? You don't lay around all day. Tell your dad you're going to do something. Don't do it because there's a consequence at the end of the day. Now, notice I didn't add that dad ran in and told him every hour, don't forget about it. Yeah. And that's what most authoritarian parents would do. So you tell them once, you hold them accountable, you follow through. Our federal government, by the way, don't get me going on what's going on. <laughs> <laughs> they, they had to read Dr. Lehman's book, uh, Have a New Kid by Friday. Oh. That's it's, funny. <laughs> you say... I try uh, not to Sorry. No, it's okay. Go ahead. No, I no, just said try not to get political. Okay. <laughs> I was just going to say, no, don't encourage him. Are you over there? <laughs> Christy, do you have kids? I don't have kids, just dogs. No kids. Huh? No, I'm the kidless you have one. A dog? I have two dogs. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of people prefer dogs. I won't go into that. <laughs> 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 oh goodness uh you say kids like sea lions perform to get attention and the attention they want most of all is yours let's unpack that a little bit yeah you know that's a good question um we talked about the attention getter a little bit but you know i make this statement to young parents all the time and i say you know parenting it's not easy but it's simple there's a simple parent and today, quite frankly, most American families outsource our children. Mm. We hand them over to strangers most of the time. We don't do enough in our home with our own children. Husbands and wives both working. They all have agendas. They all have, you know, bills to pay and stress. I get it. Um, we just celebrated our 55th wedding anniversary, which tells me a couple of <laughs> Awesome. Way to go! <laughs> That's I'm going to die. I'm going to die. And I was married longer than a lot of people who are living today. <laughs> but, <laughs> you know, our five kids were here at our summer place in New York State. We didn't know this. So they made us go and hide in our bedroom for 45 minutes. Mm. We came out in 45 minutes. And I'm telling you, there was a dinner to kill for on our front lawn with oh. beautiful flowers, et cetera. And I told one of my daughters this week, when I think of life's experiences, I can't think of a better couple hours than that dinner. Mm. Because after dinner, each kid just opened his heart up and shared about what it meant to have a mom and dad like us and mm. what it was like to have a brother and four sisters who all mm. get along and still love each other to this day. Parents, I'm telling you, there's nothing better than knowing that your adult children want to hang out with you. Mm -hmm. and so you have to put the work in when they're young there's a lot of distractions i know you're busy i know you're working but trying to get that one-on-one -on -one time with kids you know i wrote the birth order book and the firstborns tend to get way too much attention the babies are always <laughs> buying for attention and god bless the poor middle child because she <laughs> she doesn't get diddly jack she gets her <laughs> 
older sister's uh, clothes, the yeah. hand-me-down. And, uh, you know, a parent will introduce their kids. Oh, here's Robert, my firstborn. And this is little Festus, my youngest born. And uh, this is, uh, honey, what was your name again? <laughs> <laughs> That, that middle <laughs> child sometimes get lost in a shuffle. And so mm. my here's my suggestion to you who have a middle child that's sort of uh, covered by uh, a very on top of their game firstborn mm. and a very dynamic social butterfly underneath them. Pull that middle child away someday and say, honey, could I ask your opinion about something? Now, notice I'm not asking a question. Can I ask your opinion about something? Yeah, what about? What's well, about your sister, your older sister? What about her? Uh, is she a little over the top or is it me? Mm. Now, when you say those words, I'm telling you, that middle child's eyes are going to open up. She's going to think, holy crow, somebody finally understands what it's like. Mm. So parents, you have three kids, you got four kids. They're all unique. They're all special. But you got to try to find that one-on-one -on -one time. Uh, I talked to my daughter, Holly, who's now a very successful administrator in school. And she was talking the other day about how she just loved the time when she was with her dad. And Chrissy, her younger sister, was not around. <laughs> <laughs> so... And she's almost 50 years old today, if I'm thinking straight. Yeah. And uh, that time you spend, I'm telling you, parents, you've heard this from other people. Life goes by quickly. Yeah. Don't sell your kids short. Give them the vitamin E, train them up. You know, the Bible says in the way he should go. That doesn't mean, by the way, it doesn't mean the way you think he should go. Most parents think, no, that's the way God would have your kid go. What I'm telling you is all five of your kids, just like the five Lehman kids, are all very different. Mm. Mm. And you they love each other and they're close and they're close to us. But that satisfaction will come. That's your reward as a parent down the road. But don't take any guff from your son, ladies, because you represent all of womanhood, okay, to that young man. Mm. You're doing your future daughter-in-law a great service, by the way, when you do that. So, again, all these behaviors... Uh, serve a purpose in a kid's life. Yeah. That's interesting. Um, you mentioned uh, birth order in there. I am an only child, so I didn't have any siblings. How does birth order uh, actually affect raising the children? Well, first of all, those two people with you in studio ought to be saluting you right now. <laughs> Give you the honor that an only child requires. <laughs> this is true only yes. children are little adults by age seven uh -huh. they love adult company is that true so, that was when true you were, when you were a little kid really i yeah yep they would rather hang out with adults than kids their own age in fact mm -hmm. when i was in private practice misty for years i'd have parents bring me their only child and say oh we're so worried about her you know she loves she, she, read, she loves books. She reads books. You know, in 20 minutes, you'll read a book. And But we're worried about her because she's not that. I mean, a lot of kids don't come over to the house. She doesn't hang out with a lot of kids. <laughs> so what about the other kids in the family? And they say, oh, there's no other kid. She's an only child. Only child, case dismissed. <laughs> Go on. Because that's how they are. Only children do things well. They tend to be perfectionistic. Whoa. They <laughs> that, worry. Is, that is misty. <laughs> they worry about their adult parents when the parents get older there's no one else in the bullpen to help mm. so only children do extremely well in life if you want a job done right give it to the only child to do yay me. You, you know uh so your, your your question was how does birth order affect our parenting yeah. mm -hmm. we tend we tend to over identify with a child that was in our birth order oh interesting Yes. Yeah. So if you're and a baby in a family we, like me, you're going to relate more to the baby in the family. Yes. Okay. But if you're, let's say, uh, you're a firstborn and you're perfectionistic, a little bit too perfectionistic, you and your firstborn are going to be like a sun devil and a wildcat in a bag, shaking it up for good measure. 
<laughs> you have to be from Arizona to get that one. Exactly. Yeah. Well, let's, let's for our Midwesterners, it's like having a, a Michigan Wolverine, Ohio State Buckeye. There you go. The, okay. okay. Yep. Uh, so the sameness in us, I'll, wait, I'll get into marriage for just a second. The differences in you is what makes you a couple. Mm. I've had women in my office tell me, Lehman, I am so... I've had it with this guy. He 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 behaves so much so much uh, uh, like a man. And I go, really? He acts like a man. You know, <laughs> lady, I'm glad I'm a man. When I go to my friend's house, I don't have to bring him a gift. Number one. <laughs> <laughs> I don't share my food with anybody, and I do my nails in a red light. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so if, if both of you are the same in marriage there's no need for one of you that's true Oof. god made women I, women are weird okay they hug anything that moves they go potty in groups of four eight and twelve <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> they lie like dogs i'll be right back i'll just be a few minutes in the store those are lies <laughs> don't need to lie, but lies 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 <laughs> liar, liar, <laughs> <pants and> fire. <laughs> But, but the sameness is what gets you into trouble. And I said this morning on a, a network show this morning, I said, you know, marriage is not a competitive sport. If someone's winning your marriage, you're both losing. Uh -huh. you got to compliment each other. And so where he is weak, she is strong, that's good. I mean, uh, Sally knows my, my fun-loving wife. Uh, she wouldn't hurt a fly. But if, <laughs> if you ask her to point north, uh, okay, uh. she would have she would have a one in four chance of nailing it. <laughs> she has no sense of direction. I, mm -hmm. I'm like a beetle. I got a nose like a a hound. Mm -hmm. uh, I can find my way anywhere. But it's the differences that make you a couple. So you want a little tip? If you can pull this off, you're better than most of us. But here's the deal: pray together, audibly. Mm -hmm. Remember, judgments push you apart. Feelings draw you together. Simple paradigm. Like I say, marriage isn't easy, but there is a paradigm. Parenthood isn't easy, but there's a paradigm to follow. And uh, your kids want you to have their back. And they need discipline. So there's times you got to straighten them up. It's good. And then you love them and go on. So, Dr. Lehman, uh, as long as you're sliding your knees under my table, young man, or <laughs> mom yeah, doesn't grow on trees. I, you, your wife called me, and she wanted me to mention something about the toilet seat. I don't know. I <laughs> <laughs> but, well, you know, I'm familiar with all the dadisms and the things that you grew up with. You, you said that the way we were raised, we need to pay attention to that. Yeah. Because we were brought up in an authoritarian manner. I go back to God doesn't grab us, grab the scruff of the neck and twist our earlobe and say, you will do this. In fact, the scripture says, I stand at the door and I knock. Mm. And you remember that picture? It hung in my home when I was a kid. The door didn't have a handle on the outside. It had to be open from the inside. And so lots of times I think we as parents come across as the big bad wolf. We're going to huff and puff and blow the door down. Well, I got news for you, parents. Who 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 turned you into God? You know, that brings me to another thought. You know, we sort of complain about other generations. Oh, those millennials. In fact, we've got one next door. Or are you are you a X? No, you're a Y, right? What are you? <laughs> yeah, that's a long conversation. Z, uh, gener is it Generation Z or a something zenial. like that? A Zennial. Uh, do you think that is it society that makes these different generations who they are? Or really, is it the parents and the way they discipline because maybe they don't have the authoritarian and maybe that's why they're acting the way they are? I don't know. It's interesting. Well, you ask good questions, Mike. That's a good question. Mm -hmm. um, generations have always looked back and said, you know, we're better than them but this generation is sort of interesting a lot of the research that i've looked at says that teenagers don't want to drive a car at 16. i know it's like what, what in the world yeah what's that about i mean they don't want response but we had a we had a teacher quit at our school about four weeks into the school year 
And the reason she gave was she needed more me time. I need more me time. And I still laugh when I think of that. Lady, what do you think life's all about? I mean, me time? Good luck. You're going to work. If you want to be successful in life, you better understand that four letter word work because it's part of it. So I think society has evolved from authoritarian to permissiveness. Mm. The problem is, and keep in mind that both extremes re create rebellion in kids' lives. And we've jumped from authoritarian all the way to the other end of the extreme, permissiveness, and we skipped over the important part. It's like I always say middle children are the peanut butter and jelly of the sandwich. Do you like that, Misty? <laughs> the middle part, the middle part is being an authority. That's what we want to try to do. We want to move from authoritarianism. And you do that by thinking before you say things that you routinely say because your parents said to you. I love this one. Don't poke your eye out. <laughs> Let me ask all three of you a question. Have, have, you can't poke his eye out. I'm just curious. <laughs> but but we, we throw those things out there because a kid's walking through the family room with the scissors. Mm -hmm. And my parents said it to me. And I'd have to tell you, I think I said once to my kids, I caught myself. I think only, only one kid ever got the don't poke your eye out. But the apple doesn't fall too far from the tree. And so keep in mind that you're the spiritual mentors of your children. They watch how you live your life. Now, notice I'm saying they watch how you live your life. It's your actions. It's what you do. It's not always what you say. that's oh. going to put that indelible imprint in that kid's life. Oh, man, we have to watch what we do, guys. Oh, oh. I know. We have to oh, be difficult. accountable also, right? <laughs> Wow. Well, you know, when we say, I'm sorry, honey, I blew it. And I've done that a few times in life. Yeah. You never look bigger in your kid's eyes, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. That's good. And it's hard to do. Yeah. It shouldn't be, but it is difficult. So uh, I've got another question for you, Dr. Lehman. <laughs> I know of this child. <clears throat> it's not mine, by the way. No. Uh, it's a very <laughs> similar age and, and happens to be a, a son as well. And, <laughs> <laughs> and the only issue with this really fairly well behaved, but uh, this kid repeatedly brings food back to his room and drinks he's not supposed to have back there. And um, his issue is doing that. And then he lies about it. And <laughs> I guess I have it pretty good because that's pretty much our issue right now. Um, <laughs> <laughs> with this neighborhood kid who lives under yeah, you. Yeah, yeah, down the street. And uh, yeah. So, and the other well, issue is that he, we do catch him kind of up late past night. Uh, uh, I, I even caught him. This other guy did. And uh, <laughs> he's, he's playing video games when he shouldn't. So, um, yeah, what do I do there? Or what, do, what does that other dad do? <laughs> well, what is that well, other dad? Yeah. Yeah. Here's some advice for that other dad. When you know he's lied, don't ask him the question to make him lie again. Mm. Okay. Start off with, hey, I know you did this. I know you did that. But I want to talk about it. But it is kind of fun to do that, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Listen, it's, it, you get some jollies out of that. But let's take this little kid and put him at the age of 16 or 17, and he wants mm -hmm. to drive the family car that you insure. Yeah. My, my conversation, even at age 10, with is, honey, um, the one thing we need to have in this family is trust. Mm -hmm. You need to be able to trust what I say. And I need to be able to trust what you say. And I'm very disappointed that you chose to lie to me about that. Now, notice the word disappointed. All you're saying is I'm disappointed. You're not saying you're a bad kid. You're not rubbing his nose in it, so to speak. But when you say to your kid, I'm disappointed, you're raking coals over him. Mm -hmm. Because quite frankly, your kid, whether he misbehaves or not, really wants you to have their back. So. You don't have to get into a back and forth with a child. Right. Say it once, turn your back, walk away. It works. Yep. That's good. Yeah, that's yeah. huge. Yeah. Just understanding in, in school, the influence we just naturally have over our kids because they want to they please us. That's right. amazing. Hey, you know what I completely forgot? I wanted to make sure to tell your 
listeners, because I know you got a lot of listeners all over the country, uh-huh. that in February, Yakov Smirnov and I are doing a cruise. We call it, <laughs> we call it the Wit and Wisdom Cruise. Yakov Smirnov was uh, probably one of the best known comedians. He, he appeared on the uh, Tonight Show for years. Yeah, I remember him. He's, he's born in Russia. And Sally, you'll appreciate this. He calls me up out of nowhere, okay? Uh-huh. And he says, Dr. Lehman, you don't know me. I don't know if you know. I said, sure, I know who you are. I think you're hilarious. He says, well, I understand you live in Tucson. I said, I do. He said, I'm speaking in Tucson. I want you and your wife to come and be my guest. And we ended up going to dinner, went to his dressing room before and afterward, found out the guy loves God, number one. Oh, cool. His wife, his wife is from Ukraine, and he just got his in-laws out of the Ukraine. Oh, Real wow. reason. But anyway, we're, we're doing a cruise together, but he's got a great sense of humor. He always says, I love your country. I come to men's room. I find baby changing station. You don't like your baby. You bring your baby here. We give you. A <laughs> <laughs> and it's, it's that kind of G rated humor that I really enjoyed about him. But anyway, just if those of you who got a pen or a pencil, write this number down. It's uh I should give you the date again. It's uh, Febu- February. Uh, De- February 19th through 26th. We sail out of Galveston, Texas, which means you fly into Hobby Airport in Houston on Southwest. The whole cruise for the week, if you want the top room in the place, is only 2200 bucks. If you register wow. before August 22nd, you save 200 bucks, which is sort of cool. And all you do is come on and have a great time. He's going to speak three or four times. I'll speak three or four times. We'll have some hangout times together. Uh, Attendance isn't taking place. And (laughs) here's my only admonition. If you're not a fun person, stay home. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, We're going to go to karaoke and we're going to hear people who can't sing, sing. But it really is fun. So here's the telephone number. It's an 800 number. Uh... I'd appreciate it, Sally or or Kank, if you'd write it down. Okay. Uh, I'm writing so it. Got it. Later. It's 800 334 2630. All right. Got it. 2630. And that's Templeton Tours. They do Christian tours out of, I think he's in North Carolina, but he's done a great job for us before. But it's it's cheap, it's easy to get to. And if you're a fun person, we'd love to have you. So thanks for letting me say that. <laughs> Well, I'm yes. back to whatever and you want to talk about. What about your website? Can we get information there too? Uh, okay. I, you know, I'm really not sure if it's on the website. You know, you know me and technical stuff, Sally. <laughs> <laughs> I'm pretty sure I looked and it's there. But we'll yeah. make, we'll uh, we'll double check. So, but um, anyway, just, yeah. just one more quick question. You have made such a difference as I've raised my children. So I can testify to what you're sharing is so deep and insightful. And this book, Why Your Kids Misbehave and What to Do About It. You'll laugh, you'll cry, you'll see yourself in there, and you'll see your kids as being successful as they as they grow. I think that's the biggest reward, reward I can uh, share is because of my time with you, uh, Dr. Lehman, generational patterns have been changed and my kids mm. have been the beneficiaries and so has my marriage so god bless that, you I, thank, yeah thank you so much for saying that sally it's uh you know uh <laughs> this weekend i've got a i've got an event up in buffalo new york and i was praying this morning as i was driving just to bring people there that need to be there because yeah I tell you, we all need some help whether it's marriage or parenthood or <laughs> leadership or what have you so i appreciate the opportunity to be with you guys Nice to see you again, Mike. And Misty, you perfect only child. (laughs) (laughs) Right. I'm going to fire all my staff and hire you because I know you do the best job. (laughs) (laughs) Thank you, Dr. Lehman. You have a wonderful weekend. You You take care, Mike. Same to you guys. Thank you. God bless. (laughs) Bye. Bye.